assalamu alaikum i welcome you all to this new course on power electronics we shall be studying the power electronics for the for this particular semester and we we shall cover the topics pertaining to the dc to dc converters the dc to ac inverters the cyclo converters and the rectifiers in this whole process we will also cover the theory that is related to the concept of the use of semiconductor devices as a switch so let us begin with the uh, with the first lecture of power electronics power electronics has uh, two words one is this power and the second one is this is this electronic it is not actually a combination of electrical power and the traditional electronics or the small signal electronics that we study rather it deals with the control of uh, power through the use of semiconductor devices that acts as a switch so we have the conversion of electrical power from one form to another or from one form in a similar form but with different output uh, specifications this all is accomplished by using by using semiconductor devices as as switches we shall see shortly why the concept of this switch is so important in power electronics because we want to emphasize the difference between the linear electronics and the power electronics through one simple example so that we understand why we need to develop for this uh, develop our instinct for the use of uh, electronic devices as a switches previously whatever we have studied we have used these devices mostly as an amplifier where it uh, it works in the linear region uh, but for power electronics our emphasis should be on the use of semiconductor devices in the saturation and in the cut off region where these devices actually act as a switches so before we move ahead uh, let us see what kind of uh, what kind of power conversion is possible uh, through this power electronics uh, circuits so it is possible that we have an ac supply that we want to convert into uh into into a dc system so it might be you know quite uh, obvious that this is known as a rectifier system our aim here is to convert this ac into dc but with the emphasis of getting a unified power factor uh, for this uh, for this whole system previously that uh, what we have studied the diode type uh, rectifiers we shall also study here those rectifiers have a poor power factor and therefore they pose the threats of power quality however for uh, for a power electronic system our emphasis shall be on the uh, looking on to the power quality aspects of these rectifiers as well we shall also see uh, whether these rectifiers are controlled rectifiers or whether or not their output can be controlled or they are an uncontrolled rectifiers also it is a possibility that we have an ac system that is converted into an ac system but with different frequencies and different voltages such systems are known as the cyclo converters another variation here is that we have a dc system that is converted into dc system but with different specification so for instance we have a 12 volt battery we want to step up the particular voltage at some particular you know power outputs so that is known as a dc to dc converters or commonly we call them a switch mode power supplies and the last one is that we have a dc that we want to convert it in ac and we call them inverters so these four are the bottom line of understanding this uh, this breadth course or the first course of power electronics we have to see how power electronics has actually revolutionized the concept of energy conversion from one electrical uh, electrical energy uh, from one form to another form and and with high efficiency and with uh, with quite a good power quality 
The next thing important here is that power electronics is actually it ranges from milliwatt to to megawatt range. So, for instance, we have uh, uh, we have a piezoelectric converter here, and that piezoelectric converter is using the power electronic to convert or to harness the energy which is generated through this piezoelectric device, and this megawatt corresponds to the to the grid tight systems or the systems where the different the two grids of two different frequencies are actually merged together uh, to form an interconnected network and that is actually uh, related to a very high you know power ratings uh, corresponding to kilowatt and in megawatt regions so the point here is not that the power electronics deals with something which is of high power rather it is actually the conversion of power from one form to another and that is uh, through the use of semiconductor devices that act like a that act like a switch so why uh, we need to see why uh, we uh, study power electronics field and why uh, it is so a challenging field you see one of the most important point here is that suppose that we have we have some source available right and there are some loads that we want to interface now, as a power electronic engineer, you might be asked to design a system to interface a particular source to meet the requirement of the load. And therefore, you develop some sort of a converter that interface this source with this load or, or it is a converter that actually is controllable by means of something that you are measuring. For instance, we are measuring from this particular point, we are tapping the voltage and the current values or you know some other aspects we are also measuring what is the what is the total load here we are measuring certain parameters here for instance the voltage the current uh, the load whatever is the load here and based on this we are actually developing some algorithm that is used to derive this particular topology which is inside this particular circuit now the challenging thing in here in power electronics is this that there are a lot of different type of sources available and sources is not in the control of the design engineer. For example, this source could be could be a solar photovoltaic panel that is dependent highly on the environmental characteristics. It has a non-linear curve. This is the uh, this is the power versus the voltage curve. It is non-linear. And moreover, if we have uh, we have cloudy days, it may exhibit uh, sort of something like this. Multiple peaks uh, can uh, can be. You know, visible here. So harnessing the maximum power is always a challenging task. This is one uh, type of a source. We may have a wind system. A wind system is also dependent on the speed of the of the wind. How much meter per second is the speed of the wind? The location and it there, it, there may be time that the uh, wind is may barely generating minimum power. Uh, so so that's why the source is not in our control. Also, if we have, for instance, we have a fixed AC system available. We do not have a control on it. It may be possible that the system is generating 312 volts peak at the rate of 50 hertz, or it may have a system with 60 hertz. The frequency may also vary. For instance, uh, in in this in the in the aeroplanes, uh, the passenger aeroplanes and the cargo aeroplanes, the frequency is 400 hertz, and therefore the system source is not. Uh, in our control it is barely it is dependent on whatever is given the second thing here is the load load is dependent on the user right so the user it's on the decision of the user when or when he turns on the load or turns off the load and how much load it actually you know provides and what is the nature of the load we are not sure about that particular thing so this leaves this particular area which is this uh, which is this converter the only playground in which the power electronic engineer has to design and develop whatever is required to interface the source with this particular load. And with this small, you know, playground of, of a power electronic engineer or the power electronic design engineer, this is actually a very tight boundary conditions. Everything has to be settled within here. And over, over on top of this, if there is a requirement of the sizing that the converter has the weight, weight constraints. For instance, in, in space uh, systems, the weight is a very, very important issue, very critical issue. 
So everything has to be optimized in terms of its weight and in terms of its size. And then on the nature of the system, there may be a problem for uh, dissipating the heat. For, for instance, something which is designed to be used underwater. That system may have the issues of dissipating the heat, whatever heat is producing inside this uh, particular converter. So this power electronics field is actually a very, very challenging field and it involves all the other fields uh, therein. For instance, uh, just to design this particular converter, if I may say, to design this converter, I should know about the about the semiconductor devices, how they behaves as a switches, right? Also, I should know how a second order or a first order circuit behaves. So this circuit theory is here. Then we have a gate driver circuitry is involved that requires certain type of knowledge of the ICs which are available. Then if the load is, is dynamic, then there comes the concept of the feedback control, right? So the controller has to be developed according to the, uh, according to the load requirement. And thereafter, we also uh, may require the instrumentation. What kind of instruments are to be used uh, to control this particular uh, converter? Because you will be having something measured from the uh, source or from the load perspective. Also, we need to, uh, uh, to know about the microprocessor and the microcontrollers here. Right? So, the, so the aspect of the microprocessor digital interfacing system is also required for a power electronic engineer. And therefore, this particular uh, field of power electronics is a very, very versatile field when it comes to the application and the design of systems that are quite high, highly efficient and uh, that are used to interface the sources with the loads uh, and that involves the, uh, the control of power from uh, one point to another point. Moving ahead, let us see why uh, we need power electronics or what is the actual uh, motivation of this power electronics. Uh, let us have an example here. I have, I have a 10 volt source and I want to convert this 10 volt source into, into 5 volts. So what is the first and the most obvious obvious solution here. This is the solution number one. So solution number one states that we can have a voltage divider circuit here. This voltage divider circuit shall have something for instance, uh, let us say this is this is 1k, this is 1k. So as a result, half of the voltage will be dropped across this resistance and half of the voltage uh, will be available uh, at the output. And using the voltage divider rule, uh, this voltage VL is equal to equal to 5 volt, right? This is the first and the most obvious solution in this uh, voltage divider circuit. However, we have some shortcomings here that we need to see. The first shortcoming here is that this system, this this one kilo ohm resistance, it is actually providing us a constant loss of power because this resistance comes in series with the with the system and therefore whatever the current is flowing here it is producing some drop here so if we are we are dropping uh, we are dropping 5 volt here right and and corresponding to that we are losing power uh, during the operation whole duration of the operation of this particular circuit this is the first and the most important point here. the second point here is that if i want to now change it to for instance i want to now uh, change this to 10 to 9 volts right so what uh, should i do now i require to have a variable power a variable resistance here right so a variable resistance is required variable resistance rs let us say this is rs is required to adjust the to adjust the output voltage right however this is quite cumbersome that there is someone who's sitting uh, on the on the system and he is continuously uh, you know tuning in this particular circuit so what we can do here is we can adopt another solution which is solution number two which says that instead of using the resistance here why not we use we use a bjt here and we have you know some sort of a this is a base driver circuit and we use it as a as a as a variable resistance here so that so this particular device will be operating in a in a linear region right and in a linear region Despite the fact that we have solved this particular problem that now uh, this gauge driver circuit 
uh, you know might have the uh, the decision based on whatever output we are having here versus whatever uh, versus what we are getting uh, here as a as a v reference we can actually uh, develop the uh, required amount of resistance uh, which is used here for this uh, for this particular bjt the problem here is that this bjt is also operating in linear region and therefore uh, it is quite you know an obvious thing that this is similar in in terms of the efficiency compared to this voltage divider circuit here so both systems are inefficient if there is a large difference between the output voltage and the input voltage for instance if i say that uh, that i want to have this 9 volt here then this means that the system is 90% efficient only 10% power is actually you know dissipated in this uh, series resistance rs however contrary to that if i want to convert this 10 volt into 1 volt then i am actually losing 90% of, of the power here so that is the drawbacks of these two these two systems another third drawback here is that the output can not be greater than cannot be greater than the input voltage so there is no way you can boost the input voltage to desired value for instance i want to convert this 10 volt to let us say 15 volt so it is not possible it is not possible to to, to do this thing why because there is no such means here resistance is a dissipating device we can step down the voltage up to some particular value because this particular circuit despite all its you know uh, uselessness uh, in terms of the energy conversion uh, in terms of the power conversion it is still used uh, as a voltage sensing device so we use high ohmic resistance values to measure uh, the voltages specifically for the uh, microcontroller circuits however this particular circuit requires base driver circuits as well as this uh, this bjt and that comes in with the heat sink as well so therefore these two solutions are not at all an optimal solution when it comes to the energy efficiency so what is the third solution let us say as a third solution we have we have this this 10 volt system and we connect a switch here and here we have this this resistive load now if i want to convert this 10 volt into 5 volt what can i do well what i can do here is i can turn on this switch for half of the duration and uh, for that half of the duration for instance uh, let us say that this is the this is the turning on and off sequence of this particular switch let us say this is s so so let us say this is one second so for the duration of one second for half of the second this switch is is connected with this point a which means that this resistance rl is connected with this 10 volt source and here we have this 10 volt available so consequently the voltage across this load vl becomes equal to 10 volt during the time when the switch is is connected with this point number a and during the time when the switch is off which means that it is now open the resistance is cut off with this uh, source vs and therefore it gives us zero volt here so consequently we we have this type of a rippled uh, waveform uh, or, a, or, a, or a pulse type of a waveform uh, so let us see uh, what is the advantage here if i want to find out what is the average voltage here what is the average voltage here so the v average is equal to 1 over t integral 0 to t v of t dt and because this t this v is equal to 10 volt this t is equal to 1 so this is 10 and this is 0 to 0 0.5 and that this gives me this gives me 5 volt so as an, as an average value i am getting this same 5 volt here so you may ask that but this is not actually the uh, the uh, the kind of a voltage which is uh, which is desired because we want to have a stiff uh, 5 volt at the output so for that we can install some low pass filters here and that low pass filter may have the uh, a cut off frequency less than less than that of the switching frequency so at that particular uh, time instant we can actually have this uh, this this f naught less than less than this f of s to ensure that this uh, this waveform is smoothened out and it actually becomes equal to this 5 volt here so based on the duration of this uh, switching we can actually alter whatever is desired at this r of rl and by using this uh, filters uh, for uh, that that consist of the inductor and the capacitance there is no such issue of the power loss as well one of the most important benefits of using a, uh, a power electronic device as a switch of course this is actually not a 
uh, it is not a manual switch rather this switch is uh, is some semiconductor device that will be operated so therefore the problem of the gate drive circuit is required regarding the point that is it possible to have an output which is greater than the input uh, voltage here so yes it is possible by uh, by replacing this this switch position right so the switch position cannot be here it may be somewhere afterwards this low pass filter or it may be in between this low pass filter whatever is that so we can have uh, the optimal position of the switch uh, we can place it somewhere and we can play with it to develop the circuits that are able to not only to increase the output voltage but also to decrease the output voltage and some sort of circuits may have a tendency to uh, yeah, to either have an output voltage greater than the input voltage or an output voltage which is less than the input voltage. So when now, now that we are sure that the, the switches are important because they provide us good efficiency. So, the one, so now this one thing is important that the use, the concept of switch is very important for, for this power electronic circuit. So now let us see what is actually a switch. Your switch is a bistable device, right? There are various type of switches available. Let us start with the most simplest one, which is this single pole, single throw switch. So it has only one pole here, and this is one throw. It can only be connected here, or it can be disconnected from this particular point. Uh, let us say that the voltage applied to this to this switch is is this V, and the current that is flowing here is I. Then, when the switch is in on condition. In on state, when the switch is connected like this, the voltage becomes equal to zero and the current has some finite value depending on the circuit with which it is connected. And therefore, the power dissipated across the switch is equal to zero because power is a product of the voltage and the current. So when it is turned on, the voltage is zero because these two points are shorted. So voltage become equal to zero. As a result, the current starts to flow from terminal number A to terminal number B towards terminal number B and, and then towards the circuit. Depending on, upon, uh, with, on the circuit topology, uh, the value of the current is decided. Regardless of the amount of the current that flows, since the voltage is equal to zero, therefore in an on state, the power across our switch is equal to zero. Let us say in an off condition, what happens? When this is an on, in, on off condition, this switch blocks the flow of current so i is equal to zero however whatever is the voltage applied on this circuit this switch has to block that voltage and therefore the voltage may have some uh, finite value again depending on the topology of the circuit but the point here is that the power is again zero when it is turned off so a switch is a device that offers zero an ideal switch is actually a device that offers zero power loss when it is turned on and zero power loss when it is turned off. That is the reason that the switches that we use in our daily life, they do not become hot, right? So you turn on a light, the voltage becomes across that switch becomes equal to zero. As a result, the current flows, there is no net power across that particular switch. And therefore there is no need of the power dissipation for that switch. And when you turn off that switch, the current becomes equal to zero, but the voltage is there. And therefore, uh, because of the zero current, the power is again zero. So the concept of switch is here that in either state, whether it is turned on or whether it is turned off, it offers zero power loss. And therefore, switch is a very, very important criteria in achieving the high efficiency systems, right? So the high efficiency systems are quite important because most of the time, uh, the heat dissipation may be enough, so that uh, it, it may be substantial enough that no technique can actually, you know, bring that heat down. So there are limitations of practical systems because of which we have to ensure that the system has higher efficiency and, le and less number of uh, you know power losses because every power loss actually account for the uh, for the heat dissipation in a given circuit so the switch we have seen the the two states here one is an on state and other one is an off state so we have we have state number one and we have state number two in both the states the switch offers zero power loss and that what we have seen here also any switch can be characterized in terms of in terms of the of the IV characteristics, voltage, current, negative voltage, negative current, and we will see in the next lecture how 
different devices are characterized in terms of uh, in terms of these uh, you know quadrants uh, of the switches so you know there might be a switch that is capable of only working in a single quadrant there could be uh, you know there there are some some switches that are able to work in two quadrants and sometimes the switches that are able to work in two quadrants they are combined together in anti parallel and in anti series configuration to achieve uh, you know a four quadrant operation of a, of a particular switch so now that we have uh, you know basic idea of a switch let us see what are the ideal properties of a switch so an ideal switch has some of these uh, you know properties the number one is that it should offer zero turn on and off off losses so there should be entirely no turn on and turn off turn off losses right the second thing is that the transition from on state to off state and vice versa should be instantaneous without having any delay here the transition from on to off should be instantaneous the third thing is absolutely no gating requirements so it should not require any power to turn on or turn off the fourth thing is turning on and off should be controllable so that we can control the switch whenever we are desired to do so whenever it is required we can turn on and turn off the switch just by giving one command without having any gate requirement circuits without having any power requirement circuits for uh, for for operating them the number fifth thing is when they are turned on they should allow infinite amount of current number 6 is when they are turned off they should block infinite voltage and number 7 is they should be capable of working under all temperature conditions so whatever is the temperature they can be placed inside a furnace they can be used uh, in any arctic pole or north pole whatever is the temperature they should work in all you know operating condition and this may look quite an idealistic thing but that is what we are actually you know studying here that the properties of an ideal switch some of the properties are actually very much dependent on the on the research on the materials with which these switches are actually designed so we might have seen uh, and uh, and some of these are related to the topology in which different materials are actually combined together to form a, a for, to form a given you know switch so the device research for these ideal switches uh, it provides us a way forward and a direction in which the research should move on to achieve these particular goals so in the next class we shall be studying the uh, the basic power semiconductor devices so we will start with the diode in the next lecture so till then uh, take care allah Peace.